Hi guys, it's Lynn here. I hope you're having an amazing day. Now today guys, I'm going to be repotting on my um, one of my ferns and don't ask me to pronounce this guys. I'm going to put the name of what this fern is going across the screen now, but I'll try my best at pronouncing it. It is Phlebodium, Phlebodium Cydoorium. Now, I don't know if I'm saying that right, but Phlebodium Cydoorium. That's how it, I'm saying it, how it's spelt. And uh, the name going across the screen now. I'm gonna be potting this on into a bigger pot, as you can see there. Now, this pot is very unsightly, very disgusting. It's in a cardboard pot. It was in one of them hanging baskets. And um, I took it out of the hanging basket because it was sort of, it needed a repot and the, the cardboard um, pot it's in is just deteriorating as you can see there it doesn't necessarily need a bigger pot but I'm going to put it into a bigger pot here and then I'm just going to show you I'm going to turn the camera around so you can see me not only potting it up but also what I've used for a bit of a soil mix here so give a bit of an idea now there we go so you can see me potting up hopefully now then what I've used here is I've used a sort of pretty much a pure peat um, based uh, house planty type of soil, especially for ferns and other type of house plants. Um, you don't need to use any special type of soil for ferns, but um, normally I tend to use more loam based soils when I'm repotting plants, including some of my house plants, especially my cacti and succulents. But with ferns, they do like to be kept moist all of the time. So in this case, I would use a um, using peat. But it's always a good idea when you use peat to um, use one that comes from a, an environmentally friendly as possible because peat is being taken from lots of parts of the world, especially here in Ireland. Um, and um, it's not particularly environmentally friendly, but this one we've got here is a one that is sort of, how, how they say it's environmentally friendly, I'm not sure, but as envi environmentally friendly as they can be. And um, as I say, this is ideal for ferns. You can add a bit of extra perlite and things like that. I haven't in this case because our, per our ferns, we like to be kept moist all the time. Ferns don't like to dry out. Um, as long as you use a good quality type of peat, then you're okay with um, potting it on like that. Now, this amazing fern here, it has, I'm just going to show you, I'm going to take it out so you can see a bit more here. Take it out, this hideous cardboard pot. And as I say, this was in a planter that was hanging up, so the planter was attractive, but this pot's not now, so <laughs> I'm going to take that. The good thing is about cardboard, you can just easily whip it up without having to worry about um, normally the plastic pots. Now, what's incredible about this uh, fern is it has lovely furry rhizomes, as you can see there. And out of these rhizomes that have the lovely sort of brown little fur on, little shoots come out and they that's a little new fur, new frond, as they say. And the frond then opens up into these lovely, lovely sort of leaves. And with ferns, they have these fronds rather than leaves. That's what they call them. And they're quite amazing. Now, the, the rhizomes more commonly seen with ferns are known as the Devalia type of plants. But this one is, um, as I say, Cydobodium. And there's a few different ferns that do have rhizomes. This is where they store their water and where they also have, like, also take moisture from the air because they're epiphytic. Um, ferns like to be kept in sort of moist environments as well. They certainly don't like to be kept as you would keep a cactus anyway. Now, obviously when it comes to repotting, you want to check the roots. The, this is nice and spongy. The roots look pretty much okay. It hasn't got a large root system. This is fairly normal with a lot of ferns. They don't necessarily have a lot of roots because as I say, they take a lot of their moisture from the environment. Um, and this is what these roots, these are the rhizomes here also do. So, you know, it's pretty spongy there. You can feel there's a lot of roots. So I'm just going to be gently placing this into the new pot if the roots were very matted, I would gently tease the roots before putting it into the new soil to let the roots adjust into the new soil. But this case, pretty much compact. It doesn't. It's more the fact that the pot needed um, it needs a new pot because the pot was unsightly. Then it needs a bigger pot. So I'm going to be careful here with this. And as I say, I'm going to be gently putting the the soil loosely in here. And it's good not to press the soil down too tight because roots need lots of aeration and that should be okay here gently placing this one in I just need to tip a bit more out there you go it's pretty central and we're putting the, the soil all around around the edges of the pot here 
and say we love our ferns. Now, Hans, my wonderful fiance, really got me into ferns. Um, sort of this year when we moved into moving into the house we're in now, we some of our windows face north, and because of that we couldn't put the cacti in there. We've had to put the cacti in the obviously windows that face south, and the other ones that don't. We've got grow lights. So, um, but we've got ferns. Really got into ferns now because they like to have bright spots but away from light, sunshine um, so it's perfect and they're thriving we have some in our kitchen on the table and some in our bedroom and they seem to be doing really well there so then obviously just gently tucking down around the edges there oops, oops uh, scoop all that soil I say ferns like to be kept moist all the time if they certain ferns only have to dry out once and then they'll die um, these type of ferns are very they're okay you know I would, I've never let this one dry out but it's not necessarily going to die overnight if it goes into that water but some other ferns really are very sensitive to drying out and they'll just die back so um, it's important these are kept moist all the time even in the winter but I say away from direct sunshine because ferns do not like sun. In fact, they'll die back and shrivel if you put them in, in a sunny window. They can be grown in total shade as well. I always think all plants like to have sun, you know, bright light, even if they can't have sun. So I like to give it everything bright light, but um, they can be grown in shade. But these seem to do well in our, in our window. That doesn't receive any direct sunshine it gets plenty plenty of light there you go and that's it so this beauty here should, should do well just gently pressing down there looks far better now anyway needed to be repotted and as i say this will probably make a really nice hanging basket over time as a lot of the ferns do they sort of grow and hang down this needs the space to really thrive so go back in our kitchen for now on the table and then when it gets larger we'll probably put this up into a hanging basket put the little label on as I say this is this is a lovely unusual one I love the ferns with the furry roots <laughs> I just turn this around now so you can so I can see you all there you go <laughs> so guys I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you so much for watching and I want to send you loads of love heaps of happiness and tons and tons of plant power as always from across the Emerald Isle and until the next video bye